Hello and welcome to today's video. Our videos are not a diagnosis. We are simply speaking our opinions, not factual statements. Am I a narcissist? Today we are diving back into the Amberverse. Our Goral has a fresh new lecture for us. And as always, everything is all our fault, and our Goral is innocent and perfect in every way. Amber laws and laws further by saying that she never ever laws. She talks in circles and says nothing at all, so much so that I had to cut large chunks of word salad out. So prepare yourself for another narcissistic rage, featuring Smug Lynn because Amber abuses the copyright system. Clips will be heavily edited. So let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. So I finished the Stillwater Girls. Um, I gave this a 4.75 out of five stars. Why are you the way that you are? And on Goodreads, you can't rate like point something. Girl, you are the only one I know who has such a strong obsession with adding point something to a figure. If you are 520 pounds, just say that. If the book was four out of five stars, just say that. I can't take it anymore. I did get a phone call from the weight loss clinic, so I have a little update on that. Oh really? Do tell. They got my lab results finally, and they tested like a bunch of different things, and everything came back fine. Lord, it's a miracle! Besides, my vitamin D is very low. Why am I not surprised? So they're prescribing me like a very high dosage of vitamin D for me to take once a week. Happy days. Prescribed, so I'm actually gonna go get that from the pharmacy. Or is Maid Jade going to do it for you? So I'm just very relieved to hear that like, your girl, the results came back pretty well because Maybe if you left the house and got some natural light, it wouldn't be so low. I knew that my vitamin D was low, like it's been low. I think we all knew that. It's been very low for years now. I've yeah. got to, I've got to. And I wonder why that is. So another update I have is you guys know how, like I said that I found out that I have to go a whole year without binging. And well, good luck with that. And like, I kind of had like a little breakdown moment, like I cried in front of my dietitian it was embarrassing but you know no one cares. i just felt very overwhelmed i didn't like take advantage at the time and like ask more questions about why this is so i have an option of emailing her and i kindly just wanted to like understand things a little bit more so we've actually been emailing back and forth she's a very brave woman she has explained things a little bit better for me that like there is someone like above her a psychologist above her because she doesn't understand nutrition like i do who actually reads like all her notes on her patients and they help decide like the further plan for her patients who could have seen that coming right it's like you'd have to be from the future and the psychologist thinks that this is what's best for me. Well, obviously. But she also wants the surgeon's opinion. It's really very simple. She has no choice. So she's actually talking to the surgeon tomorrow and she said she's gonna get back to me. So hammer home that impatience only hurts the overall cause. I wish I could talk to the surgeon, of course, one-on-one. -on -one. That's a terrible idea. Amber knows that manipulation attempts work better when in person. So wanting to speak to the surgeon one-on-one -on -one is only for that purpose, in the hopes that he will hear her out and see how ready and great she is. But he has no reason to speak to her at this stage. That's the whole point of everyone that comes before him. Because it is a lot of like telephone and like through the grapevine type thing. And I would love to talk to the surgeon one-on-one. -on -one. Not this time. I understand I can't right now. The surgeon is very popular. There's just a way that they do things. You'll have to wait your turn like everybody else. No, you I'll have a clearer answer. And I think what would be really helpful to me, and I don't know if this is like, because I have that obsessive side of me, like I was diagnosed with OCPD, which is Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder. Okay, yes, we know. I was diagnosed with that like, five years ago collecting those diagnoses like infinity stones and it was just like a couple years ago i was diagnosed with actual ocd what infinity stones i feel like i need to have 
my surgery date scheduled. I have no patience. Even if it is a year from now or 10 months from now. But if you schedule it for a year's time, there is no guarantee that you won't gain weight and be rejected. I want to know the date because for some reason it's like I know I'm working towards something. It's because you are used to always being in control of everything. You have a right now mentality. You struggle with the word no. Placing a date and time makes you feel as though you have garnered some control over the situation. Something big and something amazing and something life-changing. But I feel like if I have that exact date... I mean, it be according to your master plan, but you can't control everything. Then it's like I could touch it. I could feel it. I know it's there. And it's like, obviously, if I don't meet requirements and I don't do what they tell me to do, etc., etc., then the surgery is going to be canceled. Reality can be whatever I want. I can see myself being more successful. More successful if she feels she has control over the situation rather than the professionals. But just don't come for me. Don't judge me. Like you always come for us. So that is something that I want to I wanna talk about with my dietitian and then like the surgeon because eventually I will be seeing the surgeon and I'm excited for that appointment because it's like the surgeon is like the end all be all. Hence why she wants to get directly to him to manipulate the situation type deal. I don't know. I'm just feeling more hopeful. I know in that video where I told you guys like this, you know, this whole year, it just gives me room to fail, blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Like I've obviously had some time to like think on it and absorb the information. And time to cool down the narcissistic rage. Given to me and I've had some people tell me that I I was a spoiled brat because I was upset. If the shoe fits. I, that, that to me was like, uh, ma'am, spoiled brat who? You, that's who! No, I just, I'm ready to actively change my life. Then do something. The fact that I was told that, you know, that's probably not going to happen. Like, of course, that was a little sad. And it's like, if I wouldn't have felt that way, if I would have just been like, oh, okay, that's totally fine. Then I know I'm not, that I know I'm not wanting this. We been new. At all. Because I'm very much like... Instant gratification. I wrote the book on being self-aware. You know, I've spent my whole life, like my first diet when, was, when I was 11 years old, yo-yo dieting. If I was able to uh, do it by myself and be successful by myself, then I would have already done it. The truth will set you free. I've lost 89 pounds multiple times in my life. The same speech we have heard for years. Aren't you sick of yourself? For years at a time, for months at a time, whatever it may be, whatever era I was in in my life, I would turn to food. That's not the answer to everything. All the time. And already that being taken from me because I'm so serious about weight loss surgery, like already that being taken. Hold up. It is not being taken from you, Goral. You will still be able to eat. The constant excuses to binge will no longer be a coping skill you will be able to fall back on. The only thing that will be taken is the control you have over deciding when and what to binge. To say it is being taken when it is something you yourself have decided to do is alarming. It is self-choice. You are giving it away, not having it taken from you. She always finds a way to make everything about victim mentality. It just adds a whole other stress. That is an interesting way to look at it. To be called a spoiled brat when it's like, that's not me. You're a lie. You're a lie. That's not me. That is not who I am as a person. Try telling that to Becky every time you had a temper tantrum. When she said she wasn't going to get junk food for you. But you freaked out so much that she always caved. To avoid further emotional assaults from the binge monster. That does indeed give spoiled brat energy. Spoiled. And to be told... Like you're throwing a tantrum. What? You're not fooling anybody. I feel like I'm being so long winded. Well, you said it. I didn't. I've had people like, your foster care timeline doesn't make sense. And I'm just like, people want to like consider me a liar about everything because that's who you are. They'll only watch like a few of my videos and then they'll skip some of my videos and watch just like reaction channels and just like hear what reaction channels say where reaction channels nine times out of ten have their information wrong and it's just like, uh.
always the viewers and reaction channels fault. It wouldn't be because you are bad at telling stories or explaining things and do frequently law. You're a law. You're a uh, law. People are just like so confused about everything I talk about and it's like, I don't know how. It don't make sense. Biggest pet peeves I have with like people watching me or like choosing to watch reaction channels and like ignoring what I'm saying but like listening to the reaction channels like that is one of my biggest pet peeves. That's because those that have narcissistic personality disorder deeply struggle with being called out. The truth always wins. A and up. Because you're using the wrong math, honey. I love when Amber passively aggressively talks down to people and belittles them by calling them honey. I'm such a smug bitch. Right, Amberlynn's story, Amberlynn's truth, Amberlynn's narrative, trying to create the story of her life that isn't real to suit your guys' entertainment. Literally pathetic. And I will go to my grave saying that majority of you are an idiot. I already know the response. Amberlynn, it's not because you're fat, it's because you're a narcissist and you're a bitch. And look how you treat your viewers. And I have realized I'm so much better than majority of you. Yeah, like that's why, that's the only reason why it's not adding up. You're a law. You're a law. Let's say I do gaslight my audience. Who freaking cares? Who cares? Because you're not you're not it's the wrong equation you're doing multiplication in a division book like you're what i'm a narcissist i have some more steps i need to do because i'm at it's 4 p.m and i'm barely at 2,000 steps and you tried to make us believe that you hit 4,000 steps every day without trying now that we have had three days of proof turns out it's not true as you haven't managed to do it once even though it is the bare minimum i'm not surprised and it comes right after a lecture about how you don't lie. Everybody else does. Great timing. So I need to do a little bit of this. I mean, seriously, man, that's pathetic. I haven't lied about anything. <laughs> sure. Sure I do. And people just out here, that's a lie. That's a lie. This whole video is a lie. Like, how? You know why. How, like, it it makes my brain hurt. Girl, the fact that you just said you don't lie about anything made my brain hurt. That alone is a lie. And a big one. <laughs> big? Big? When every single last letter and syllable that I said in the video is 100% truth, this video is a whole lie. You a lie. I'm just like, oh my god. <sighs> yeah. It's been a few seconds since Amber has gaslit, projected, and lectured us. Every once in a while, our girl has to offload that narcissistic energy. It's it's just exhausting. It's so exhausting. You're exhausting. I know this vlog was just me like talking a mile a minute. Talking a mile a minute, going in circles, repeating yourself, and lecturing your viewers. Man, the fact that you even have viewers at this point is a miracle. To sit there and state that you don't ever lie about anything, it truly is eye-opening, as it displays how deep your self-narcissistic delusion is seated within you. You actually believe your own words, which is really rather scary. Poor all you do is law. And the irony that saying you don't law, being a massive law, just has me laughing out loud to myself here. And that's when you're a comedian. I literally could continue this conversation for the next lifetime. <laughs> well, we all know a narcissist loves the sound of their own voice and can lecture others until they are blue in the face. Nothing changes. <laughs> like, I can still talk. I could just ramble on forever, I promise. You just like the sound of your own voice. But I actually need to go to the pharmacy before it closes. Do pharmacies close at 6? I don't really know. Um, so I'm gonna go do that. Um, I'm probably gonna take a little Uber. Oh, that would be a first. Feline is working and I don't want to bother her. <laughs> that would be a first. She's always willing to help me whenever. Well, I don't call her maid Jade for nothing. The main requirement that Amber has in a relationship is that her girlfriends are willing to do everything for her. Walk her dog for her, collect her food, take her to appointments, wipe her ass, you know, our girl's usual expectations. Come here. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> such a fucking lie. Oh my god. That is not. But it's like, people have beat it into my head that I can't do things on my own. Coral, you are in your 30s. Why would they need to beat that into your head? No, I don't drive by no means. But I don't need nobody. 
I can do everything on my own. <laughs> yeah. That's why there's Ubers, okay? They're there to help people who don't drive, and that's okay. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Anyways, I'm rambling. I'm gonna go. Can we get a show of hands for those that believe she in fact did not get an Uber and waited on Maid J to take her? Let's take a look at some of the comments on Amber's video before we leave the situation type deal. As a former healthcare worker, I can promise you that nothing looks worse than a patient insisting that things should work differently for them and they should get special treatment. That's a massive red flag. Amber, I don't think this helped your case the way you thought it would. You said you weren't throwing a tantrum, but when you explained what was actually happening, the thing you described was still a tantrum. I understand that it's hard to have no control, but control of your situation is what got you here. You can't just work on finding ways to feel in control of this journey. You have to find ways to cope with letting things be out of your control. You have to prove yourself to these people before they'll schedule your surgery, and they've told you exactly how. That's what you can control. The rest is not up to you, and you have to learn to be okay with that. I know it's hard, but it's the only way. This happens whenever you reach any setback, or someone tells you something you don't want to hear. You get upset, you threaten to give up, you lament about how unfair it is, you question the knowledge and intelligence of the professionals giving you advice, and you basically say I need this done my way or it's not going to work at all. That's throwing a tantrum. This housebound era is somehow even more boring than the bedbound era. It's so frustrating that you feed into your alleged diagnosis when they fit your narrative but once they don't serve you anymore, it's like they never existed. Amber, you have to stop attacking your audience. Thousands of people all having the same opinion should tell you that you are the problem in your life. You are the obstacles in your way too. Stop telling us we are wrong and just work on you. Her wanting to speak to the surgeon directly is giving let me talk to the manager vibes. I want to talk to the surgeon myself. Let me rephrase that for you. I want to manipulate and convince the surgeon that I am ready now because I don't want to accept that I have to work on myself for a year and can't have what I want right now. OMG the smug Lynn. That certain voice she gets where she knows absolutely everything. Thanks for watching our channel. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, stay safe.